Hi everyone and welcome to another Flight Deck to Sim video. Today we're going to take a look at FS Realistic's brand new avatar or first person mode update. It gives you the ability to do exactly what we're doing now, to walk around in a first person or in an avatar's body uh, around the airport or aircraft you're in. We're going to use this feature to complete a virtual walk around of the PMDG Boeing 737. Now we're currently in Auckland, New Zealand, walking towards Stand 10. Now this is the stunning scenery from Flight Beam Studios. Really allows you to use this avatar function and enjoy the high quality scenery developers like Flight Beam Studios uh, have to offer. But uh, this is sort of going to be part and parcel with a bit of a fun virtual tutorial. We're going to show you some of the features of the avatar and also complete a virtual walk around of the PMDG 737 exactly as I would do it if I was uh, pilot monitoring on a duty today. Now here is the aircraft. We'll now join you in the cockpit and show you some of FS Realistic's uh, new features. So here we are in the cockpit. I've just put the battery on and the GPU on the bus. That's it. And here we have FS Realistic's tab open. Now you might have heard the noise whilst walking to the aircraft. That is all from FS Realistic. I actually had Microsoft Fly Sim sounds muted uh, walking towards the aircraft here. And there's lots of new features. You've got all the usual stuff that you'd like to have to increase ambience, such as noises and vibrations and sounds. You could even have things like sneezing and toilet flushes, which is what every Flight Sim user wishes to hear. Um, but we're going to be concentrating on the avatar feature today. Now it's still in an experimental phase, so there's a few little glitches here and there, but it is available now with the latest version of FS Realistic. And you simply push the uh, P button, which I've assigned uh, as the button here, to go into that mode. You can hear a nice little noise, and there you go. You can see we're in this first person view. You can also show your avatar too, so here he should be appearing, there he is, he's got his arms stretched like he's carrying two invisible barrels, um, but it's um, a male uniformed pilot uh, with Hispanic skin colour, you can choose whatever you so wish, but you can walk around using the arrow keys, W, A, S and D, you can also have a shift to run, he starts panting after a while, which is pretty cool, um, but <laughs> essentially that's uh, the features here. Um, really enjoying using it and now we're going to complete a uh, virtual walk around of the 737 based off the real world procedures I follow. Again, I must stress this is not to be used for the real aircraft, it's purely for entertainment only. So here we are, we're just outside the front of the aircraft. Jim, my virtual first officer, is going to complete the first flight as pilot monitoring. I'm going to complete the walk around. Now I don't want to get too close to the cockpit, the reason is with the FS Realistic uh, avatar modes when you get close to where the cockpit is it spawns you back into the cockpit there's also some strange black artifacts there uh, fs realistic are aware of that again it is an experimental uh, update at the moment it's to do with the avatar functions just something that happens a little bit of shimmering with the graphics as well but otherwise the ability to complete a walk around is a, a really neat feature i'm really enjoying here now i'm just going to alter my speed of my avatar you can press the the, uh, click the mouse to adjust the speed so he's a little bit fast at the moment let me just uh, slow him down slightly there he is he's a little bit of a, a better speed now you can also use the mouse uh, cursor to move up and down which is quite a neat tool when doing the walk around so how do we do a walk around on the 737 well first thing is check the nose of the aircraft we have the angle of attack sensor and a pitot probe just want to make sure there's no covers on that and it's all clear we're just checking the general condition of the fuselage and skin. Moving on to the nose cone, we want to make sure that the uh, randomes in good condition, the conductor strips on the side are attached and nothing is falling off. Again, as I mentioned, I'm not going to get too close to the nose wheel because I don't want to spawn into the cockpit. We're just checking that the chocks are in place. The general condition of the tyres and the oleo, uh, you can see some metal there. It hasn't um, been pushed in at all. There's no damage at all. The shock strut, that's the word I was looking for, uh, isn't fully compressed. Now, because we've got the LED lighting, there's no taxi light attached to this, uh, so we don't need to check that here. There's the E&E bay. We want to make sure that's latched and closed. And moving on to this side here, I'm just currently walking through the GPU. Um, check the angle of attack sensor and the two pitot probes. The condition, there's no covers on it. There's the external power connector as well. Uh, external power is connected and plugged in. Again, checking the condition of the tyres, the nose wheel, which we've already done. Uh, moving our head down here, we've got a little green disc. That's the oxygen pressure relief valve. Just making sure that is green. Again, checking the condition of the e, &E bay and the e, &E, uh exhaust, which is that little uh, dot here. Moving back 
again we've got the static port, the alternate static port, making sure that's all in good conditions, nothing is blocking it. Uh, working our way into the cargo door. Now during, during the walk around typically there's ground crew loading the aircraft so you don't want to get in their way but it's always worthwhile sticking your head in there making sure everything is looking hunky dory and normal. We've got some lights here for the wing, making sure the condition of that is all good. Here's one of the ram air door inlets, making sure the ram air door is open. You can pop your head in there, but don't do that with the AP bleed on, otherwise you'll lose your sunglasses, and that will annoy the engineers if they need to come and collect that as well. Uh, this is a drain mast. This is where water from the sink in the cabin and the toilets is jettisoned. There's a heater on this. If it's not working, you can get a big clump of ice after a flight. Just want to check the condition of that, making sure it's not damaged at all. Here's the leading edge part of the wing between the fuselage and engine. We've got the LED lights, checking the condition of the lights. It's pretty good. There's no cracks or delamination or anything like that. Moving on to the engine cowling, checking the condition of this as well. This is the uh, engine strake here. This generates a vortex which increases airflow at lower speeds over the wing. Improves the uh, stalling characteristics, I believe, as well. Just checking the condition of that. Uh, here is the number two engine, checking the cowling and the condition. There's a little probe here. This is the T, it's T12 temperature probe, it's called. This is temperature measured for the EEC. Again, checking the condition of the engines, the spinners, and the shroud, and the abradable lining, making sure that there is no damage. Checking the cowling here. The engine oil access door is closed. The thrust reverses if they've been deactivated by, deactivated by engineering. There's a little uh, red stick which pokes out, so we're just making sure if it has been deactivated that that is displaying. Moving on to the leading edge, you just want to check the condition. Obviously, during landing and takeoff, these are extended, so if you've had a bird strike, we'd leave them extended to make sure there's no bird debris here at all. We've got little holes in the leading edge as well. This is for the wing anti-ice, checking they're not blocked, they're all open. And on the outer leading edge slats, there's no holes there. They're not actually heated because they're so thin. No ice really forms there, not a noticeable amount either anyway. Um, checking here, we just want to make sure the fuel measurement sticks and the fuel tank vents uh, all uh, unblocked and flush with the wing. And we don't have this funky feature on our 737 NGs, but uh, make sure that's all in good condition. Uh, check the nav lights, we've got green for the starboard, red on the port. Now in the real aircraft, we take the opportunity to stop here and then just have a general look at the aircraft, check the condition of the entire fuselage and airframe. You can usually spot things which you might not be able to spot close up, especially on the upper part of the fuselage. And then we'll move on to the trailing edge of the wing. Here's the trailing edge static wicks. We've got two on the wing, three on the horizontal stabilizer, four on the vertical stabilizer, just making sure they're all fitted. We can have a number missing. Again, checking the MEL if there are any missing. Checking the uh, aileron and aileron tab, making sure they're flush with the wing, which they should be at this stage. The trailing edge flaps, just checking the general condition as well. And then we make our way to the main gear. Also looking at the rear of the engine. It's not modeled here with the PMDG, but there's something called the IDG oil cooler back there. It's pretty dark and as I mentioned not modelled we'd be checking that too. Uh, here's the main gear checking the condition of the tyres, uh, the brake wear pin indicator as long as the parking brake is set uh, make sure that there's sufficient brake uh, or brake um, enough brake on the brake pads try to get my words together there. Uh, the general condition of the tyres is pretty good make sure the ground crew have actually uh, set the chocks onto the tyre making sure there's no gap like there is here. Into the wheel well bay, not much modelled here by PMDG, but very loud with the hydraulic pumps whirring. Again, with FS Realistic, I think uh, it cuts off the audio uh, as if it's in the cockpit. I haven't got the Microsoft Flight Sim audio because you, you can't actually hear the electric hydraulic pumps, unfortunately. Um, again, checking the rear condition of the tyres, making sure there's the oleo strut and the strut's not uh, depressed all the way down. Otherwise, that'd be an issue here. Uh, the air conditioning bay is all locked and closed. Making our way to the rear of the uh, the fuselage here. For some reason, there's a picture of Michelangelo. I think it's something to do with the the developers claiming to be Michelangelo or something when making this. I'm not so sure. Um, but yeah, you always want to poke your head in here. Generally, there's no bags loaded in the 800 in the rear cargo hold, hold unless it's completely full up front. We usually use it for use it for cargo and company mail. Um, rear door is flush with the fuselage. We check the negative pressure relief valve. The outflow valve is open. If it's closed, that's usually a maintenance action. We've got to then make sure that the pressurization mode selector is back in automatic, otherwise you could get into your uh, into serious trouble. Um, 
Here's the vertical stabiliser, again checking the elevator field probe which is up there on the vertical stabiliser, making sure there's no probe covers. There's the APU inlet, uh, the leading edge of the horizontal stabiliser, there's the three static wicks here. It's quite hard to see and unfortunately you can't zoom in uh, in the first personal avatar view at the moment, well I certainly don't know how to, but there are four static wicks there on the vertical stabiliser and then making our way to the rear of the aircraft to check the APU, the tail skid uh, indicator here as well making sure there's no damage as no one scrapes the uh, the 800 uh, tail skid indicator uh, there. Um, what I'm trying to say, yes the, the 600 and 700 don't have the tail skid indicator, it's only on the 800 and 900 variants of the NG. And that's essentially it, we've done half the walk around, you then repeat that on the other side, you then check the port uh, light is red on the left wing, uh, otherwise I'll now um, meet you back in the virtual uh, cockpit and we'll uh, conclude the video there. Actually, just before I jump into the flight deck, guys, I completely forgot about one additional feature with the avatar. It comes with a very handy flashlight. You can assign that to a button. So if I just uh, turn it to night time here and uh, close the, or minimise the weather tab there and press my assign button. There you go. You can also complete your walk around at night. I wish my torch was as uh, bright as this one here, which is a really neat feature with the FS Realistic Pro avatar function. Right, I'll see you in the cockpit. So back now in the virtual cockpit of the PMDG 737, it looks like my virtual first officer has completed none of the setup, so I'll crack on with that uh, for our virtual flight to uh, Wellington. Um, I hope you enjoyed seeing FS Realistic's avatar update, it's a really cool feature, allowing you to complete walkarounds like I've just did, done, or explore high quality sceneries like we have available here uh, from Flight Beam Studios in this case their Auckland scenery. Massive thank you to FS Realistic for sending me a copy of their product. It is available on a seven day free trial. All the information's in the video description below. I hope you enjoyed it anyway. If you do a massive favour, smash the thumbs up button and if you want to stay up to date with the latest content, don't forget to subscribe as well. Fly safe and I'll see you on another live stream or video very soon. Cheerio. A few moments later. I don't think you have any idea how fast I really am. I'm fast as f boy. <laughs>